is a complex structure complex country big country many religions many political thoughts as a result the medical pluralism in this country is more a socio political happening rather than a healthcare happening if there was an intelligent way of integration then it would have been better shri si Yeah, and uh, we are uh, headed towards a city called as Pune. Pune is a very good seat of Ayurveda as far as the northwest India is concerned. Ha, ha, wo bhi ana le. Ha, aane wale. Acha. Chalo niche chal ke samajh. Ayurveda is a science of life having its own diagnostic method and treatment depends on that diagnosis. So, when patient comes in front of you with modern diagnosis still we have to diagnose that patient on the basic principle of ayurveda then only we can treat that patient by ayurved medicine ayurved had a very bad reputation in 40s 50s and 60s because it was more taught in a tradition to tradition practice and they were not really taught the fundamentals of ayurved they were just taught what remedy to use where and mainly it was getting restricted to digestives and the purgatives and the sex tonics and the vital ulcers and that is what made harm to ayurved rather than propagating the tradition the practice the principles up to 1932 there was no registration anybody was practicing ayurveda but nobody was practicing the surgery what we are doing is suturing of the wound opening the wound that was not done previously now as soon as the educational institutions were open this particular surgical part has started when i entered the ayurvedic college there was a school of thinking which wanted ayurved to be taught in a pure form they used to call it shuddha ayurvedist the puritans and there was a group which was strongly believing in an integrated system and they were called as integrated people So we had a very small Ayurvedic college, like a primary school, because the government had not recognized Ayurved in those days the way they have recognized now. Uh, my course was an integrated course. Surgery was taught by modern surgeons. Ayurvedic surgery was taught by Ayurvedic surgeons. So we were acquainted to both. The techniques were depending upon the skill of a surgeon and the correct knowledge of anatomy. This is the very course. It's called as very course veins. It's a obstructive process of peripheral circulation so where the blood gets lodged because of improper circulation we identify this kind of processes basically also with liver and spleen now you are talking about integration right there is a plant which is called central asiatica we call it brahmi in sanskrit in germany there has been a lot of research on this there is a medicine which is accepted by german government which is based on central asiatica now there they have given permission only for very costly peripheral vascular disorders mm. but we use this plant with the other products which are used in liver and spleen also so the whole approach is different here as a ayurved gynecologist i use antibiotics before during or after surgery but for pain killers i use ayurvedic pain killers for the patient they are anti inflammatory and there are very less chances of developing pus in the wound so that is the integrated approach ayurved drugs keeps the wound healthy to surgeon as pan apna discharge asa hai to ma tacha bhota je kiti vaal lavat basta peksha to tate khayte padartha badalna manje ti nipat hai to badlun jato na ani aplya la kashta kami hotat nahi tar taket tutun jatat ya goshti ayurved tavu shakto he mala nehmi sangach asto ye fakt ayurvedat karto कि नेमको को खाला दिल तो ती जखम कमी खराब हो रहा है कि बेसिक्स आयुर्वेदा ती सर्जरी मैंने जास्त चांग शिका मिलता इवन इन गायनिकेन ऑप्सिटिक आई मोर एम्फसाइज ऑन काउंसलिंग ऑफ द पेशंट 
if you leave a lifestyle given by ayurveda or sharia what is to be followed according to night according to day according to phase of your life according to age of your life you can become disease free so in that manner i started leaving ayurveda and then applying ayurveda when i was coming in ayurveda there was a big argument going on between the integrated course and the yeah. ayurvedic course right so the reason ayurvedic people objected at that time of integrated course was because most of the graduates from the integrated courses they were, were not practicing in ayurveda ah, yes. and they were doing the blind following of allopathic system right so what is your suggestion what is your what is your advice hmm. based on your experience well i was practicing in one mapujal area where there was no electricity nothing anything it is in the primary health center one surgeon was operated tubectomy was to be done a small incision was taken and almost all the intestines they came out then he was unable to manage it because general anesthesia was not allowed then he called me i extend the incision i put all the intestines inside and we did the tubectomy now adequate incision is the basic principle of ayurveda ayatashya vishalashya suvyakto nirasraya which help us everywhere doing surgery and cross care and paste you banao ले थोड पानी के मरे हां पछि एनु जे दूध मरे निकले सिम्टम रिमेंस ए सिम्टम इन आयुर्वेद और बायोसाइंस ए स्वेलिंग रिमेंस एंड इन्फ्लेमेशन रिमेंस एज इन्फ्लेमेशन माय फेवरेट स्लाइड व्हेन आई गेव माय फर्स्ट लेक्चर इन एन एलोपैथिक हॉस्पिटल वाज दैट ऑफ अ कैलिडोस्कोप where i gave two kaleidoscope i said the internal mechanism of the kaleidoscope remains the same is the angle which you change the body changes but body doesn't change the way you look at it is change ayurveda says that dosha dhatu mala these three things they made our body even the definition of health is prasanna atma indriya manaha swasthya iti abhidhiyate so with body components they are emphasizing on mind also we can see this dosha dhatu mala or we can see different systems in our body but we cannot see the mind from our body so when i treat a patient of infertility i always remember this sentence this sutra this quotation from ayurveda and after talking that with the same medicine she get controlled hypertension controlled diabetes if there is no prasannata there is no satisfaction there is no health in your mind that triggers your body elements to become vitiated to become abnormal how do i differ among the different states in india was there any difference in tradition or in practice or is there kind of a uniform understanding mm. if you go back to about 30 years yes there was there were what we call as different schools of thought but if you see in last say about 10 years uh, it's really changing now and there is a lot of exchange like what we used to call as the kerala tradition is now getting spread all over the country and also it goes out of the country now and in a way there's a benefit of institutionalization and the academic changes which are occurring with common syllabus and such things so there is a definite change it is more getting integrated within the system uh, till 1986 in tarachan hospital we were doing almost all major surgeries but we were not giving any antibiotics rather the antibiotics were not available but there was no infection and now in spite of antibiotics there is infection that is also due to the type of food that they are taking the food itself is adulterated due to insecticides and manures we were to do shuddhya bhalla tak bhalla tak has to be boiled in milk so we collected many of the samples in pune but all of the milk they had insecticides so how bhalla tak could be as a medicine when the milk itself is not available in a pure form so we are to change also but without changing our basic principles nowadays ayurveda has become very costly that's why many rich people only they are taking ayurved medicine my intention basic intention is to take ayurveda to the middle class lower middle class so that they can afford it and i believe in that kind of practice where patient will bring 
patient to your OPD, not your advertisement. And that's how Ayurved can spread. There is a cost for modernity. Somehow, unfortunately, the medical care and the healthcare delivery is related with the materialism. It's more to do with your ability to standardize, your ability to put a cost to it. It's very funny, but it's a fact. We need to create systems and procedures for the right kind of Ayurvedic therapies. Now I'm talking about treatment part. And this all could be standardized, which government is doing. But what is happening is those who are doing, they are not the practitioners. It is all the pharmaceutical companies and the doctors who are appointed on different government posts. They have changed the whole picture, preventing the people going for in Ayurveda. Those who are working on primary health centers, they are not getting the medicines, Ayurvedic medicines, to use them on the primary health center. Because pharmaceuticals are to sell their uh, drugs. I don't think the administrative and the regulatory mechanism in this country is very ideal. It is the result of socio-political reasons that we have Ayurveda, Yunani, Siddha, Yoga, and something to compete with Tibetan medicine, which is given a separate political mileage now. There is no harm having a pluralism. But pluralism without communication is very harmful. So even today we are looking at the limitations of conventional medicine based on the data coming from other countries. We don't have any data of what is happening in this country. I had a patient. She married at the age of 16. And in that first year of life, she would not conceive. And because of that depression, she suicide. And that inspired me a lot that I should concentrate on infertility and woman health, which is very important. That's why when I practice keeping that in mind that prasanna atma indriya mana haswasti ittipidiyate, so I emphasize on her mental status, even her family status. And that changed my attitude towards life and especially towards women. Any of the oriental medicines, the classical systems, they all have a built-in component of the social dimension which actually gets recognized through the concept of mind and mind-body relationships. And spirit is what we call as a psychosomatic link. And in that sense, science was and will always remain a necessity. Because science is nothing else but questioning. A rebellious way of asking what existing is, what is now and what is next. So everything that is non-scientific cannot be religious only. Because the concept of spirit, concept of existence, concept of living and non-living is beyond religion. That is why we need to bring those components back into medical care. Now when I know that a prick on the thumb is going to reduce the obstructed hernia, why go in for inflection of the thigh, giving ice bags and all that? In a second of time, you just give a prick and everything will be reduced. When such a techniques are available with us, why they are not being practiced? But we need to look at the system as a whole and how it can help the overall health care of the people. If you ask me what is integration, this is integration and the objective of integration, and the purpose of integration.